Uh, good morning everyone, my name is Sunil Pant and today we are going to discuss an uh, important topic and that is force. So in force we'll understand, first we'll understand the motion of a rigid body. So how does a rigid body move? So a rigid body can move uh, in two ways. First, either it can do linear or translational motion or it can do rotational motion. Now for both we need a rigid body and a force to be applied on that body. So let me take an example. We have a duster here and the duster is a rigid body. We apply some force. If the body is not fixed, it is not pivoted at a point. So it will move, it will do translational or linear motion. But if the body is pivoted at some point and you fly, apply a force, it will do rotational motion. Now we are going to discuss in our course about the rotational motion. So for this kind of motion, we need two things. First, we need the body to be pivoted or fixed and then we need force to be applied. So in this case, the body is being pivoted at a point. You can consider this as to be the axis of the body and the body is rotating along this axis when a force is being applied. So this is the requirement of the rotational motion and this is the rotational motion. We need body to be pivoted or fixed and we need the force to be applied. Okay. Now moving ahead, we have something to discuss which is known as moment of force. Or torque. So what happens is, suppose you have a body, rigid body, this one, this is the rigid body and you apply a force and then there's the center of the body along which this body is rotating and this is, this you can imagine to be the axis of the body. So body is rotating along the axis of the body. I'm applying a force at some point. So this moment of force or torque is Suppose this is the rigid body, this is the axis of rotation, here I am applying my force and this from the center of the body or from the axis of rotation, the force is being applied at a distance r. So this moment of force or torque, I will write here moment of force equals moment of force is the product of the force applied and distance of force of application from the rotation of axis. So to calculate the moment of force, what we need is, we need a force to be applied on a rigid body, which is rotating along the axis of rotation. And from this axis of rotation, we need to know the distance of the point where the force is applied. So R is the distance of the point where the force is applied from the axis of rotation. So by multiplying these two factors, you will get the moment of force. Now let us come and discuss <coughs> Let us discuss the unit, SI unit and CGS unit of moment of force. So, SI unit of moment of force will be, as you know the SI unit of force is Newton and the SI unit of distance is meter. So the SI unit of moment of force will be <coughs> Newton meter. CGS unit of moment of force will be dyne, which is the CGS unit of force, and centimeter, which is the CGS unit of distance. Now, if you want to know the relation between the SI unit of moment of force and CGS unit of moment of force, that would be 
1 newton meter is equals to we know that 1 newton is 10 to the power 5 dan and 1 meter will be equal to 10 to the power 2 centimeter so that brings us to 1 newton meter is equals to 10 to the power 7 dan centimeter so this is the relation between the si unit of moment of force and cgs unit of moment of force okay now we know that to calculate this moment of force or torque we have two important factors one is the force being applied another is the distance distance of force of application from the axis of rotation that is r in this case we have considered it as r so if you want to calculate it moment of force is equals to force into r okay so this moment of force basically depends on two factors one is the force and second is the distance from the axis of rotation all right uh, now the next thing we are going to discuss about is the clockwise moment and the anti-clockwise moment so basically there are two types of moments one is clockwise moment another is anti-clockwise moment so what are they first let us discuss anti-clockwise moment so in anti-clockwise moment when a force is being applied the body rotates in anti-clockwise direction so if this is the body so anti-clockwise means the force will be applied in this direction and the body will rotate in this direction so this is the anti-clockwise moment and for numerical purposes we consider this anti-clockwise moment to be positive then we have clockwise moment and clockwise moment is when the force is being applied in the clockwise direction and the body rotates clockwise for numerical purpose we consider clockwise moment to be negative one so these are the two types of uh, moments anti-clockwise moment which is considered to be the positive one and clockwise moment which is considered to be the negative one now coming back to the topic that moment of force depends on two factors force and distance so let us understand this how does it work so suppose you have a door and there's a door knob this is the rigid support of the door where it is being fixed and there's a door knob which is placed here so the question is why the door knob is placed at a maximum distance from this axis of rotation so the door knob is being placed at a maximum distance from the axis of rotation because you know that when door knob will be placed at a maximum distance from the axis of rotation we need to apply a less force if you remove this door knob and you put it nearby this axis of rotation then you have to apply a greater force so this is one of the example where we find that this relation between force and uh, distance perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation how does they affect moment of force thank you